Hello, my name is Clive from Clive's Art, and welcome back to the mountain and rock painting, which we've gone through from stage one. We put the background in, as you know, and we use the palette knife to bring up these mountains. Now, I'm going to be working on the foreground mountains and the actual outcrop here on the base of the mountain. I'm going to be looking at putting some water in place as well. So without further ado, let's get into this. We'll have a look at the paints that I've actually got on the, the palette. And um, well, we'll start painting the rocks. Yes, nice. <laughs> okay, so the paints I've got actually on the um, palette. I've got a selection of palette knives ready, just in case we need to go into the um, using the palette knife on the uh, painting, as we did before. I'll just pick up a palette knife. I've got some... Um, raw sienna, some burnt sienna, and I've mixed some Mars black with some Van Dyke brown, and I've also got some Van Dyke brown there. Now I mix that in the same way as I did before with the heavy structure gel. Um, these two particular mixes are for the palette knife when we actually come to do the outcrop on the painting. So um, we're looking at a selection of brushes. Um, Basically, we're going to be looking at a selection of flats, one or two detail brushes, and this I got some here somewhere, a couple of small ones. There we go. So as you can see, just a selection of brushes, all about roughly about that size there. And I got a number six detail brush. That's a number two mini flat, basically. There's a number three detail brush, and I've also got a half inch. Um, short flat as well and that's what I'm going to be using on the painting today so getting into the painting itself now we just need to get a bit of um, our media mix formula now I have changed this slightly um, since um, I put the another mix up this is refined again this is actually now flow improver and retarder which um, that I mix up specifically for this now this is available obviously on the website if you want to go and have a look at that that is not the mix that i put out on youtube this is a total separate mix and works in the same way and it's a lot easier to actually use so um there's nothing wrong with you using the mix that's actually on youtube please do that and but this is refined basically um and they're in squirty bottles and etc so um we need to go into a bit of raw sienna and just increase a couple of highlights here and there. Now we can see what I'm doing with this brush is I'm trying to find those little sharp edges on the rocks and I'm just dropping in some very light highlights on those. Now we are going to be putting some water in here shortly. I'm going over to uh, the number six detail brush and I'm just blending, this is dry, I'm just blending those edges off like that. I just want a little bit of highlight under those rocks. And going back to the short flat again, I just want to emphasize a couple of these highlights on these rocks. Again, going back into the detail brush and just smoothing off those hard lines and what I'm trying to do is separate it separate this from that um, and just follow the uh, patterns as I've said before on um, the series the other series um, or the other lessons should say just follow those patterns. You'll find the patterns. They, they, they're there. Your painting is going to be so different to mine. I just want to emphasize a couple of these edges. 
and as I've said before don't worry if it looks a bit too light because we can always go in and darken a few of these up And again, just smooth that off. I'm aware that this looks a lot easier than what it is, but as you can see, this is already starting to darken off and that's what I wanted. The light is coming, I don't know, approximately that way. So these are going to pick up, I want a flat spot there, and uh, I haven't decided exactly how this water is going to fall yet, there's something I haven't thought about. Maybe I need to put a, a black outcrop there, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with a brush, I'm going to go into that mix that I made with a heavy structure gel, and just with a brush, and I'm just going to come across and then I'm going to put it in quite thick there. Just making this up. I'm, I'm, I'm a, bit, a little bit quiet at the moment because I'm trying to work out where this water would actually come from. It looks as if I can get it to flow that way now. Again, I'm not washing my brush. I'm just going into a bit of that, that raw sienna. And I'm just going to quickly touch the edge of this. So if you don't want to use a palette knife, then you know you can you can sculpt with just a brush. You're not gonna get as good as an effect, but it's better than nothing at the end of the day. There you go. And then get this brush now, which is a detailed brush, and just very lightly, very lightly, hardly touching the canvas now. I'm just smoothing that in just to get some shape and form on those rocks like that and again I'm going back into a bit of that raw sienna I'm just going to emphasize this edge now Back into the bit of that dark mix, just underneath there. Make it look as if there's a little bit of a, a, a ridge there, which is separating that from that. Back into the detail brush to act as a blender. Just drag down a little bit like that. Going into a bit of the raw sienna again, just go along the edge, pull down, jog across there just to blend that up. And we've developed some sort of a ridge there. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to clean my brushes. And I'm going to be looking at actually at the water. So um, I'm just going to switch the cameras off a second, get the painted together, and um, I'm just going to take five minutes to look at this painting to see exactly where I'm going to get this water to run. 
and um, I wanted to come over this area there so um, yeah just bear with me one second I just need to switch the cameras off now and decide exactly what the next stage is going to be okay so we're um, on stage two now you can see top corner there that I've actually put a little bit of blue in because um, I just wanted to test the color now I've actually got some phyllo blue and some titanium white now I've mixed a bit of white that's all it is white with phyllo blue and I've got a couple of different values so obviously tinting up to the darkest blue that I want so I've done it in stages just add a little bit of white to the blue until you get to the the tints you want you want to lighten it a little bit we've discussed this before and keep it in in a run like that so at least you know where you've been and we can alter the colors so I'm going to start with um, a color roundabout in this area because I want to go from dark to light now I've started the run there I'm not too worried don't forget that's going to be really tacky so we need to dry that I'm not too worried about the rocks because we always put rocks in front of this run and I want it to flow like as if it's coming from the top of the mountain now you can use um, a bristle brush such as that um, these come in different sizes obviously I got a couple of small ones and I got a couple of big ones so these are really cheap and nasty things you get from a dollar store so but yeah as long as the, the bristles don't actually fall out um, then they do the job so just push that into the, push the paint into the bristles don't overload the brush and take a little bit off the excess and then just basically just pull down like that and flick up a little bit just to get a look as if it's a splash and they always splashes at the bottom so just pull down and don't forget that's gonna hit that and it's gonna flick up all you're looking for at the moment is a run of water over the waterfall straight down Think about water. Think about water, how it's going to flow. And this is a semi dry brush. This is not loaded a lot with paint. And you're going to have flicks up here. The other thing you've seen. Um, Bob Ross and that using fan brushes yes you can use a fan brush if you've got a fan brush um, again the idea is this is not to overload it too much and we'll we'll say on the base here um, we'll just go straight down like that went into a little bit more darker blue and leave it at that for the moment The idea of this is to be delicate with it. I 
and not go too mad too quick. Get a little bit of the darker blue and just put a little bit here and there. Now what I gotta what we gotta do now is allow that to dry and we can put the highlights and the darks into that. Now before I do that I'm just gonna put my brushes into the water. I'm getting my um oops, where's he going? There we are. I'm getting my palette that we used originally doing this section of the rock and I've got a very small palette knife um, use whatever palette knife that you've got to hand I'm going into the the black and and um, Van Dyke brown mix that I made and I'm going into this outcrop like this and I'm going to put that on fairly thickly Putting it in front of the water we just put on. I don't know if you'll notice that. So that now looks as if it's in front of that. Okay. Actually, that's a bit too small. So let me just change my palette knife. It's better. Picking up the just the burnt umber now with the structure gel, and I'm just going to put that across the top there. You can see already because that's dark under there and I'm putting a lighter colour on top it looks as if that's underneath this now. And that's just a block in basically. So that looks now as if it's in front of that, which looks as if it's in front of that, but that looks as if it's underneath that. So see how easy when you start playing with light and dark, how things actually look. We can increase the texture on these rocks just a little bit now with what we got on the palette. So just put a couple of bits of texture on here and there because we're going to have to let this dry now and in my case I'm going to hit it really heavily with a an air dryer but I don't recommend you do that with modeling paste or um, heavy structure gel because it can take forever you, you, you're better off actually leaving it to rest but because I've got a time constraints and I want to try and get this lesson completed today I'm going to do my best to try and force dry this as much as I can it may be a little bit tacky um, so okay so just cleaning my palette try not to waste too much paint put my palette one side I'm going to clean all my brushes down I'm going to force dry that now I don't recommend you do that because for obvious reasons um, it can cause you problems please 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 just 
um, let it air dry even if it takes 24 hours you need to let that dry off um, the reason that I've put some of the water in we're going to go in we're going to put some darker lines in there this is not like oil painting this is not like um, dropping in water on oil paints as you've seen with uh, Bill Alexander and Bob Ross and all the other people have paint wet on wet this is acrylic so things you can still get the same effects but they just take that little bit longer to to get um, so what I suggest you do now is um, practice that let it rest um, give it 24 hours to dry if you can um, I'm going to force dry this now so I'm going to stop filming and I'll be back in a minute I'm back yes it's all nice and dry I did force it a little bit and I think that is going to be fine as it is so let's work on the waterfall a little bit more I want to put some dark bits in there now and I also want to put some highlights in there as well so I think that's the most important thing so let's get to the canvas so I'm just using a, um, a number three detail brush I'm going into my medium mix formula and I'm going into a little bit of the the darker blue which is on the top part that we mixed now I have sprayed my palette with a bit of with my mister bottle um, just to stop the um, paint from drying so let's put a couple of dark spots and I'm just using the brush very very lightly here I'm just going over that That we've already done and don't worry if it looks as if I'm going over that white bit this is the idea is to be putting a bit of a, a glaze over this now you you've seen me when I was doing the yellow down there I actually painted over couple of the bright spots and this is exactly what I'm trying to get in here now I want to just darken that up but leave a couple of light spots as well now it's you, you could double load the brush if you wanted to on the first stage when we did this but I tend to do it this way because I get a little bit more control of where I want these dark areas to be now down a, a, a the side of this I want it darker down the one side so it looks as if the light is coming there and it's a bit of a shadow and again this is what you tend to do when you're doing waves and that and to, to get that look as if the, the wave is deeper in certain areas and others we will look at waves again later on but what I'm trying to do here is establish some depth to that now because I put a, a, a darker line there then I and, and that's nice and light there it looks as if that's that is in front of that now so and this is what I'm trying to do is establish some shadows and we can come in there with a bit of highlight later on underneath there as well look on that one edge there now and down this edge a little bit darker on this edge And what I'm going to do then is just put a bit there, a bit there, a bit there. Down that edge. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Keep an eye out for my weekly updates. Join me on Facebook. They, they're always there. And they'll let you know what's coming up in that particular week. So may you God be go with you. I'm Clyde from Clyde's Art. Take care. Thank you very much. And don't forget to give me that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Bye bye.